Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our current guest, well, first of all, everyone should recognize our guest. We have Katie Smith back on the podcast. She's coming to talk and, you know, give us an update on what she's been up to. And, I mean, we talked about this right before we started recording. I mean, she was last on December of 2019. So back when we still were able to go out and do stuff and, you know, life was completely different than it is right now. So, I mean, it's going to be an interesting conversation that we're going to have with her. And she's coming to us all the way from Florida again. But most importantly, she's our current guest. Katie, thank you so much for coming back on. Thank you for having me. What's going on? Oh, not not too much. I mean, it's 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 60 degrees here in Minnesota, which is, you know, it's the warmest it's been since basically October. So I'm just loving it here. You know, I, after I'm done talking to you, I got to enjoy the last bit of sunlight that I have. But what is the current weather like in Florida right now? It's 80 to 85. And that was even in February. Oh, God. Well, you can't you can't always get what you want. I mean, yeah, we had that big winter storm that came through and it was like negative 35 here. So that was not that was not a lot of fun. But before I depress everyone with that, I mean, it's been a year since we've talked more than a year. And I mean, obviously, so much has changed. But what has this last year been like for you? What's your journey been like? Well, obviously, it hasn't gone as planned. I was supposed to come right out of nationals and be requalified for 2020s national shows. I had a couple in mind that I was going to do, but they kept getting pushed back. And then by the time I was going to get ready and do my last one, it was just like, no, I'm just going to go ahead and wait it out. So um, plans are this year. Of course, I have to recall if I now. So I will do an um, 828 Palm Harbor show and then um, recall if I myself for North Americans, which will be the next weekend. September 1st. So that will be my second shot at the pro card I should have gotten back in November 2019. Yeah. And I mean, what is your, what is your training even been like through all this? Cause I mean, coronavirus, I mean, when it shut down everything, I mean, there was a good period where even in Florida, I mean, people were probably freaking out. They didn't have, you know, equipment to do. How did you survive that? Especially being a bodybuilder. Cause as soon as the gym shut down, I was like, Oh my God, all these bodybuilder guests that I have their their lives must seem like they're coming to an end right now. I mean, it just must be crazy. So it was pretty crazy. If you go back and look on my Instagram, you can see the gym that my boyfriend and I had built. And so like we literally had, um, you know, the plastic containers you keep like cereal in. Well, we filled them up with concrete and we had two of those and PVC and that was our dumbbells. And we took a bunch of two by fours and built a squat rack, which was complete with a place to put like the um, the bar for benching. Um, our bar was actually, um, I mean, I don't know if I'm saying this right, a 71 inch like pole that you call a nipple. Is that, do you know what yeah, that is? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I, I, I would have been an engineer in college. It's just that I like to have a social life. That's, that's the excuse that I give basically. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so it's like this metal looking pole. And I mean, that's it. That's all we had. We managed to find some like real weeder weights at our friend that he just had literally in the back of his garage, like they were covered in dirt. So we washed the um, set of weeder weights off and we literally put them on our little metal pole and we were able to like squat and bench and stiff leg deadlift, do upright rows, curls, um, really whatever you wanted to do. Because like I said, we had built this massive rig. And we had it to where you rack your bar so you can unrack it for a bench press. And, of course, we made our own bench out of, um, like, a nightstand. Like, we broke apart nightstands and tables. And we rigged up a, well, just long enough slender bench. And we um, had another rack to where we unrack the bar. And then we even had another, um, I believe, like, pole or something. I can't even remember now. At the very top. And so we were actually able to do pull-ups and chin-ups on this rig that we built in our, get this, apartment, third floor living room. Our apartment had nothing but this rig. So how did you like, how did you get it so that you were able to do it? Would you, did you have it connected to something so like you wouldn't obviously like break it when you were doing pull-ups on it? It was sturdy. Like it was probably like five pieces, you know, front to back. Um, I mean, it was sturdy. We put a lot of time and effort into making this. We had found friends with um, enough wood. And out of this um, rig, we even had cables. So Lowe's and Home Depot were still open, you know, of course, during the pandemic. 
and um, like literally like the, you know, the wheels and um, some form of like wire rope. We created a pulley system. So it was like we had our pulley of our rig and we had our little wheel and we had um, more of our cereal containers. We filled them up with concrete. Of course, we had different sizes, so we had different kinds of weights. And then we put a, um, a hook eye screw in the concrete. So then we took clips, like basic clips, and had our pulley and our clip connected, and we'd clip it on to our hook eye, so it was picking up our weight. And we were able to do pulls, tricep extensions. You know, we were we were doing anything and everything we think of. We built it to where it was a fully functional dual cable pulley system. Not to mention we did buy Bowflex for like 80 bucks too, first generation. Jeez, you are the one person I've had on that like actually built their own gym literally from scratch. Most people would be like scavenging for like anything they could find, but like you guys literally took the home improvement angle on it where you just decided, hey, we're gonna build our own gym then actually out of whatever. I mean, hey, you guys should like try to patent that stuff and try to make up your own like business of like do it do it yourself like at home stuff because that's that is awesome. Yeah, that's that's ingenuity at its finest, and that's that's amazing that you were able to do that. And I, I love that story because it just shows, yeah, if you really want it and, and you know, you have enough time and effort, I mean, you really can make something out of nothing and really, you know, stay in shape. But was there any food shortages around you? Because, uh, especially being that I'm close to farmland, I mean, meat was kind of short at, at the time. So then we kind of had to compensate with that, but was there anything like that down where you are? It only lasted for the first couple weeks, I would say. Like, there was a scare initially. I mean, when I didn't believe that Florida was shutting down, and then it did. And I was like, oh, toilet paper's not going to run out. You know, meat's not going to run out. I'll never forget the first time going to Walmart with my roommate. And I was like, what's going on? Why is there no food? Like, why is there really no toilet paper? Like, what's going on? I'm like, I can't believe this. So, again, luckily, um, boyfriend had a job working at a resort, and they were stocked full of food. So we had 10 pounds, I'd say, of chicken. Um, you know, I mean, we were able to get egg whites because that's not something everybody's just buying off the shelf. Of course, there was no, like, beef or turkey for a couple weeks. But once um, it got stocked, like, Tampa is in a good area that we weren't really in a shortage for food. That's not something I actually remember struggling with. Um, I mean, it wasn't like you were eating to bulk then because you weren't going to the gym and lifting heavy. So obviously the diets had changed. And um, just another thing I want to point out too, like um, I used to teach group exercise. So I was doing like hit training and like, you know, insanity, stuff like that. So I was doing free hit from home live on Facebook. I mean, so many people were doing so many different things that it was just, yeah, I mean, that's just insane. But with your equipment that you had at home, do you feel that you gained anything or was it all just about maintaining your your current size that you had? I definitely maintained. I know to other people, I looked like I was getting more jacked, but the reality of it is I was actually like pretty shredded down for Corona. Um, I was able to maintain like every bit of my muscle, but I mean, I wasn't eating carbs. I was only really eating protein and vegetables and I mean when when I say that was nothing to do we would walk five miles a day just to have something to do we were building our rig we were we we literally could work out in our apartment for two hours a day between free weights the rig we built and the Bowflex oh yeah no yeah that's I mean yeah, just what everyone had to do and just being able to try to maintain something, especially for the bodybuilders. I mean, it was really, really hard for so many of them. And yeah, I mean, just, just, I mean, it's just so fascinating what everyone had to go through and, and get into. But when the gyms finally opened up, I mean, were, were things different for you in your training when you went back to the gym finally? Was it, or was it the same kind of as it was the year before? Or did you mix things up? I mean, obviously it was, it was pretty much the same. Um, just having to go, okay, like, uh, like now I can lift heavy and okay, now I can go back to eating more. I don't have to do as much cardio. I don't have to be in a, um, like a, a mental state of freaking out that I'm going to get fat. No, that's yeah. I mean, as soon as the gyms open, I mean, to be honest, the gyms just opened up here a couple of weeks ago because they closed again in like November. 
So yeah, it's always been, I mean, the second time they closed, I immediately was getting text messages. Hey, do you have any extra weights that I could borrow or stuff? And yeah, it was, it's just, it's, it's been crazy all, all along. And, you know, on top of that, how did you deal with all this mentally too? Because I mean, like with the sport of bodybuilding in general, I mean, there's so much of the physical transformation that people notice, but that mental journey, especially during this pandemic, when everything, especially in the beginning seemed just so uncertain, then all of a sudden everything shut down and then it looks like, you know, wow, this could, this could be it. I mean, everything seems like it's going to hell. So what was that mental journey like for you during all this too? And like trying to stay calm and positive. Um, well, like I said, I kept kind of like trying to move forward because I was pushing for initially a May show. So I was like, okay, I can do this. I can hold my muscle mass with free weights at home and, you know, just body weight stuff, hit stuff, plyometrics. And like I said, I got pretty ripped, but the more the year went on, you know, you always see those other competitors who had brands that had garage gyms and you're seeing them actually be able to um, like leg press, you know, and seeing them like really kill heavy weight. So then you're watching them continue to push heavy weight and you're having to do like lightweights and rip and shred up and just maintain. And it kind of messes with you that way. So then you're like, well, crap, I'm not going to have enough size this year. So, you know, after maintaining slash just being ripped all summer, gym's finally open. And then you're like, well, you know, now, now you feel a little bit like too small to compete. So then you kind of pull back, hold off. So um, not to mention the finances of it all. I mean, you're talking about somebody who's making money from personal training and group fitness and gyms close and you have no job and you're planning on competing and you spend four months not working and you're going, even if I looked like I was ready to get on stage tomorrow, I couldn't do it just because finances aren't there. Absolutely. And I mean, when it comes to your clientele, did a lot of people stay on with you or was, was there a drop off just because I mean, just normally, I think a lot of people were kind of freaking out and then they kind of were focused on things that they thought were a little bit more important to them. It was like, everybody just left. I mean, it was like gyms shut down. I had a lot of older clients. So, you know, obviously they stayed home and they're still staying, you know, to their self. Um, and I mean, it, it was just so uncertain. It was just like, Hey, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Like, you know, this is it for a while. Yeah. Which is especially, I mean, and again, once everything closed down, I, I was just thinking about the Bibles and I was like, Oh yeah, the personal trainers too. I mean, that just must be just awful. But I mean, it's, it's just, is it different now to kind of be a personal trainer than it was before? Cause obviously, I mean, with just, you know, everything that's been going on, is it just, does it just feel different doing your job as it, as it opposed to maybe it was a year ago? It, it does. And this is where it kind of gets like hard for me to talk about is because um, obviously over Corona, there was a lot of people that were online giving away workouts for free, um, you know, doing challenges in groups for free, or you have people that are coming out of the woodworks as coaches and they're selling their programs for super, super cheap, or people are finding, Hey, I don't need to go to the gym. I can do so-and-so, so-and-so is at home workout. Um, now, um, being back at a corporate gym, um, as a trainer post Corona, it's hard because the the gyms in Florida are so big and they are so crowded. It's that like if one or two of your clients get Corona, they're out for two weeks. Well, that's two weeks delayed. You know, if um if you have old people, they think they're okay, then they get scared, then they quit. So it's like you're you're constantly on this up and down roller coaster of well, which client is going to be sick this week for two or three weeks. And I mean, that's just the reality of it. You know, you've got gems and you've got a lot of people and you've got flu season and you've got just this bad mixture and you can't call it and it's not steady. So you just have to kind of ride the wave until this whole thing just passes completely. Yeah. Which I mean, has been just so interesting. And have you had any clients personally that have gotten coronavirus? Plenty. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have you gotten it yourself? Well, I think I had it in January before it was a thing. I actually did get it in March of last year where it was, uh, I got it at a casino and then it, it, it lasted for only a couple of days for me, but yeah. So it's just been, yeah, just this whole experience and this, this whole journey. And I mean, have you been thinking of, you know, like how you can like 
make your business grow and stuff, especially during this time. Because the one thing that I did really hate too, when I saw like all those people offering those free workouts and stuff, and I mean, it's great that you offer free workouts, but it does kind of screw over the people that would make a living off of doing that before, because then how are they able to make money if, you know, their competition is doing everything for free. But has there been any like thoughts that you've had about, you know, oh, maybe I can do this to help promote my business or maybe I can do that to, you know, help to adapt to things? Because now that everything is going online now and everyone's working from at home, I mean, it's really changed up a lot of professions, especially personal training. Right. Well, um, right now I'm still just kind of in my gym and doing my thing. But I do have a website I'm working on that's going to be like just bigger and better. And I'm going to have more online help, online coaches, programming. Uh, one-on-one, uh, even virtual personal training, or just um, if you like go to my page, I'm going to have different um, workouts written or, you know, just some, some tips and stuff. Yeah. Well, and that, and, and that's obviously, I mean, that's great as well. And so this past summer and this past fall, was it just sort of like a bulking season for you? Because I mean, with so many people with all the shows keep getting delayed and canceled, did you decide that you just wanted to do that? Or were you still trying to get show ready? And then you were just constantly having to readjust your diet and stuff because everything was getting delayed? Um, you know, once my last show that I was planning on doing, uh, which was going to be September 2020, I was like, I don't have my eye on any competition. So my only goal is just to try to get bigger, you know, and just bulk. So I, yeah, since September, I was just like, screw it. Let's just lift and eat and bulk and grow. Which is good because I've had so many guests on here where like they did like an 11 month prep and it's like, oh God, like the body is not designed to be in prep for that long. So those poor things. But yeah, that's that's been, you know, interesting. And especially, you know, just with all this uncertainty and stuff, I mean, it's it's great that you were able to come through this and that and to do all this. But yeah, I mean, it's just just the times that we're living in and stuff. And I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, I cannot, I could never have imagined that anything would ever happen like this that would, you know, change so much. And, you know, talking to you now, you know, a full year and like three months since we last talked and it seems like, you know, it's a, we're in a, you know, a completely, completely different world. But when it also comes to your, just your, you know, your health and fitness journey in this, in this last bulk, is there one body part that you think that you've improved on the most in this last bulk since September? Um, Definitely like Definitely chest, because that's the most noticeable thing people can see. Um, but, like, looking back, honestly, even though, like, I feel like my legs are the most stubborn and are still stubborn, and I still hate them, like, I really do feel like I've made some decent progress with legs. So what do you do for legs? Because as someone like me who also struggles with legs to a Dickens, I mean, I'm taking everyone's advice, and I'm trying it out and seeing if I can get any results at all. I just really, I, I mean. People want to hype up accessories all day, and I'm the person that, like, I'm going to hype up compounds all day, and I've tried a lot of different things, and the thing that's um, number one, like, helps, but also keeps your knees safe is just kind of sticking between, like, that 12 and 15. So for me, it's not exactly lightweight or moderate, but it's, like, as heavy as I can freaking go for those 12 to 15, and I always, like, will pyramid up do three or four like heavy working sets there and then even do like a back off set or two but i just stick with like three or four compound movements so say any kind of leg press any kind of squat any kind of hack squat any kind of lunge you know um i'm one of those people i'd rather do like in place lunges like with like really heavy weight than lightweight walking lunges you know Oh, absolutely. I mean, I did, I tried a time under tension leg workout and, you know, I got three steps out of my bed the next morning and I almost fell over. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. So it, yeah, it's all individualized for the person. But when it also comes to when you were working out at home, was there a lot of time under tension in your workouts? Because like, you're not going to be able to, you know, put up like, you know, a, a bench of like 200 pounds or something like that, especially with all the, some of the equipment that you had. So was it a lot more just, you know, feeling the muscle and, you know, just trying to, you know, get as much out of it as you could. Right. Just a lot of sets, a lot of reps, you know, just um like I said we worked out for two hours we would do like push for two hours to do a day of pulls for two hours for legs it was actually different because like there's really not a lot you can do I mean we could do squats you know we could do stiff legs that's fine but to be honest like my legs like I did a lot of hit so it was a lot of plyometrics a lot of jumping squats jumping lunges you know pulsing squats um curtsy lunges just anything body weight you know and just just whatever makes you like cringe and like burn 
that's what I would do during Corona. Oh, I mean, people were talking about doing like weighted stairs and stuff like that. And that's, you know, that's, that's enough for me. Yeah. So that's really, I mean, people really taking it, you know, to what, wherever they, you know, could go and stuff. But I mean, now that it's, it seems like Florida's kind of gotten a lot better when it comes to like loosening restrictions and stuff like that. So when you're in the gym now, do you have to wear a mask or is it, you know, you can, you don't have to, or what's that policy like? No, no, you don't. Sorry. (laughs) She's got Corona, everyone. No, I'm just corona, kidding. But, yeah, I, no. <laughs> I was going to say it. I was going to say it. No, but that's, that's, you know, that's great because, yeah, I'm one of those people where I drink like a gallon of water every single time I work out. So, like, I could not – that's why I still work out at home now where it's like, yeah, I, I cannot – especially like breathing too. Like when I'm doing cardio, it's like, yeah, you're not going to get me to wear a mask because that's, you know, I can barely breathe even enough as it is without that mask on anyway after I'm, you know, running for a significant amount of time. But, yeah, it's just, yeah, some of these things that they that they have. But – I mean, especially with, you know, you know, all the stuff that's been going down in this last year and, and everything, what has been some things that you've been able to focus on to sort of bring your mood and bring your spirits up? Because I think for so many people that are suffering, you know, with like depression now, and there's you know, like the suicide rates going up and, you know, a lot of people are struggling with this. What has been one thing that's really, you know, helped you maintain that positive attitude? Well, I mean, in March, we were just kind of waiting for May, you know, every Every month it was like, okay, well, when are the gyms opening? You know, once the gyms were opening, that was fine. You know, Um, it seemed like a really long time from March to May. But in reality, March, April, May, it was like, what, three months? Not even. But, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It is nice living in Florida. Um, You've got 10,000 gyms around you and you go to the bodybuilding gyms and they don't give a fuck. So it's fine. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. And I mean, even like a week ago, I couldn't even do anything outside. Cause it was like, you know, like negative 10 degrees. So, you know, can't go out on a run, can't do anything like that. So yeah, Florida is, if there was one spot to have a pandemic, I'd say Florida is probably the best spot to, to be in just because they, yeah, like you said, they don't care and you know, it's perfect weather and stuff. So yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just, it, it's great that there was that. And I mean, when it comes to future plans, so you said that you're preparing for a show now and you know, Obviously, you know, they're, they, these dates are hopefully set in stone, but uh, has this prep been different than any other prep as you're sort of getting ready now to go into, you know, the, uh, the shreds? Um, I'd really say no. I mean, last prep, I wasn't dealing with the pandemic and it was pretty open and shut case. Um, I'm easy to prep because I stay lean. Um, I put on muscle pretty quickly, so that's been easy. Um, now that everything is good to go, I mean, I have everything I need, you know, food is not a shortage, so I'm just following the plan, still bulking, um, probably up until May, actually, then just, uh, cutting from May to August 28th. Yeah, that's, that's great. And what has your relationship with cardio been like this last year? Because that's my ultimate trigger word where I hate it more than life itself, but I mean, you have to do it. Have you done any cardio at all? Or has it been one thing that you've been gladly able to give up for the pandemic? Oh no, I've still, I've still done it because, um, you know, it's just one of those things like you get to a certain point of bulkness and you're like, man, I need to do some cardio. Um, so I, I've always stayed on top of that, whether it's been just doing some hit, you know, just me making up my own workouts, plyometrics, or um, just, you know, going for an extra long walk, or sometimes I will just get bored, go to the gym and do like 30, even 45 minutes cardio. I need to take things up a notch myself, gaining, you know, that COVID 10 pounds that, you know, everyone seemed to have been gaining. So I definitely did a little bit more cardio than normal. But on top of that, I mean, sleep is the number one most important thing in this lifestyle. And I don't care what anyone says. I mean, it's just so important. What is your sleep been like? Because, I mean, I've had people that, you know, they've become night owls. They've, you know, just their sleep has just been so out of whack because, you know, they don't have as much to do and just j- it just been crazy for them. But what has your sleep schedule suffered at all or has it gotten even better during the pandemic? So you want to know strictly about the pandemic? We can do both then because I know some people who, you know, they wish that the pandemic was almost back on now because they've been getting like 10 hours of sleep a night then and as opposed to like the six that they're getting now. Yeah, when I tell you, like, I... I... I mean, we, we were we were freaking sad that gyms were closed, but I mean, sleep like 10 hours a night, like nothing to do but like lift weights, eat and sleep. It was it was simple, you know, um, but then gyms opened up and I went back to work, corporate gym, and I was working morning, early mornings and then having my middle of the day break and then going back at night. So I was losing a bunch of sleep. So I was 
one of those people that said, man, I miss, I miss the quarantine. And then I decided to move my night people up to morning. And then all of a sudden I'm waking up at three 30 in the morning to get to the gym by four 30. And I did that for months and I was like, enough is enough. So. Oh my God. You poor, did you just become a caffeine addict basically? Oh yeah. Since five years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. Like I sometimes go to bed at three 30. So, you know, when you're getting up that early, it's like, Oh my God, that just must be, that's just ridiculous. But Hey, I mean, at least you're able to do that for an extended period of time. Cause I, I'd, I'd be one of those people where I'd last a couple of days in that schedule. And I'd be like, yeah, this is, th- this is way too much, but you know, this whole, this whole past year has been a lot of trial and error, which is, you know, a big theme of this podcast too, because, you know, it's, it's all about finding out, you know, what works best for you. And I mean, this pandemic has thrown, you know, so many obstacles at us that I think, you know, it's been, it's been just an interesting thing to see, but as you are getting ready now to, like you said, you're going to, you know, bulk for a couple more months and then you're probably going to, you know, lean down. Do you think that things are going to be different for these competitions than they were before? Because I mean, a lot of people did struggle, you know, like with maintaining their muscle or putting on size during this pandemic. Do you think that that's, you know, been the case with a lot of people kind of like what you went through where you weren't able to put on a lot of size, especially during the pandemic. And then now this past off season, I mean, it's been kind of like a, a free for all for so many people. Oh yeah. I definitely think that like, everybody's like, Ooh, let's go crazy. Like gyms are then like, you know, everybody's going to be hungry for it, uh, hungrier for it. But the thing I love again is, um, competitions in Florida, like it shouldn't be any different. I've seen pictures where people have been in other states competing and they will be on stage in a mask. And I'm like, absolutely not. So I just hope and pray that Florida does not require you to have mask on stage, which I'm sure they won't now, um, or even backstage. Cause I'm just so like, this is crazy. Well, and especially with, I mean, that's the only benefit of having a mask on stage is that you can hide your smile. That's the, that's really the only benefit that there is to it. Other than that, you know, yeah, there isn't, there isn't one at all. And it's like, these people go through enough already. They're already all dieted down. So you want to restrict their breathing even more by making it, having them wear a mask. It's like, Oh, good. Good luck with that. Yeah. Cause I've seen some of those photos and it's like, yeah, them wearing masks on stage. It, it doesn't even have that good of an aesthetic look either where it's just like, it just looks so out of place. And yeah, I, I agree with you on that 100%, but I couldn't agree with you more. And then one of the things that I also want to talk to you about, because I always did whenever I have first have a guest on, I always ask him, you know, what's one body part that really, really took off. And then what's one body part that lagged behind. And I remember you said your shoulders were one thing that really took off. And, you know, I forgot to ask you the first time, what do you train for shoulders? Because that is the number one question that I hear or answer that I hear from women is that, Oh my God, my shoulders took forever to grow. So I would get killed in the comments down below. If I had you on again, and I didn't ask you how you trained them because everyone would be like, Ryan, why didn't you ask her how she trained her shoulders? Basically. I mean, that's just absolutely ridiculous. So what does a shoulder day look like for you? Because yeah, you do have really nice shoulders and I think anyone would want to at least get to a 10th of what you have right now. So again, it's all about starting with compounds. So if it's a dumbbell shoulder press, a press barbell shoulder press, or even like Smith machine, um, I could do anywhere from like six to eight or 10 sets, just working up, working down, working up to maybe like a heavy 12 if I felt good. Maybe if I don't feel so good, maybe heavy 12 to 15. Um, but then it's all about angles. So, like, you, you do lateral raises a certain way. We well, have to change it up. Do them all the ways. Do them out. Turn your shoulders in. Turn your hands out. Push out that way. Push out 45. You know, don't just go front and side. You know, it's about how you angle your body, angle your shoulders, angle your hands, elbows. So. I mean, again, that's kind of like my specialty of being a trainer, like to go with people one-on-one and critique them and like, you know, (laughs) manually contort their arms and put them where I need them and show them how it's supposed to feel. So that's my rant on different lateral raises. Of course, you've got close upright rows. You've got out just a little bit more. You've got really wide upright rows. And again, that's another one where you have to know how to fix your body internally rotate and how to pull and the direction of pull up not yeah can i just say trap city basically good god i mean it's like you 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 don't even have a neck anymore basically (laughs) when you do that yeah that is absolutely insane yeah good god yeah that is yeah that is absolutely absolutely ridiculous yeah that's that's ridiculous. Is that anything that like you train at all? Or is that something that just came natural for you? Because I think that's that's one of those body parts kind of like calves where it's more a little bit more natural for people. 
Just deadlifting. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that does that does that does really seem to help too. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that's awesome. And again, that's why I love having personal trainers on because they definitely do explain things a lot better than. And I mean, I I cannot tell you how many people they just think for shoulders. Oh, I just got to do lateral raises. That's the only thing that they ever think about doing. And then, and then they always say like, oh, I'm just going to work shoulders. And I go, well, what part of your shoulder are you going to work? And they go, oh, just the shoulder part. And I was like, well, there's three parts of them if you wanted to know. And then, so yeah, that's a whole different thing to where people just need, I think the more that, you know, obviously the better that's going to be, but especially nowadays with people, you know, being concerned about going back to the gym and stuff, I've always found that this is the one opportunity that people could have where they really could get in great shape because let's be honest, people tend to have a lot more free time now than they had before. And one of the biggest, biggest excuses I bet that you've heard is, Oh my God, you know, I, I just lack the time. I, I, I just want to get in shape, but I just don't have enough time. Well, if you say that excuse now, I want to know what's going on in your life because that's, it just seems ridiculous. But what advice do you have for someone right now? Who's just thinking about getting started to get in shape now? Because I mean, this is a completely different set of circumstances as if someone were to have you on when I had you on last time to were to come up to you and say, how do I get in shape? Because you know, it's just so many different things that people could do, but what advice would you give for someone just to be able to get started working out, especially during these times? Well, I mean, it just depends if they're comfortable with being in a gym or not. I mean, if they're comfortable with being in a gym, it's like, okay, get in the gym, like start with machines, learn your basics, learn, you know, what movements work, what muscles. Also, if you're someone that you are scared to go to the gym, um, okay, body weight stuff, just basic body weight movements, get some fresh air, walk, get a bicycle, you know, start small, see how much you can handle. Um, get used to your body feeling sore but again it's like you always have different people different personalities even different injuries so it's it's all about it just depends well and you got to make sure that you don't overdo things because i had a buddy of mine who he decided to do like the the 500 push up 500 sit up 200 pull up thing like every single day where he tore one of his pecs like a couple weeks in because it's like yeah you you overdid things a little bit there so you know you got to make sure that you don't go full ramble like some of those people that i know where they walk into the gym they work out you know like three hours a day and they last about a week in the gym then and then they're like why am i so sore i can't do this anymore it's like because you didn't you didn't take the baby steps and for everyone as much as i hate it you know just go for a walk that's the easiest thing too just to get started i I mean, that's, I mean, and I'm fine with walking. It's the running part that just absolutely gets me. But you said bikes too. And yeah, bike rides. I mean, the only bad thing about bike rides is that the second time you get on that bike after going for the first time, it's one of the most painful things ever. Just getting used to that again. I've, I've never, I mean, I hate that more than life itself, but it, you get used to it after a while, but yeah, I mean, it's just, there, there's so many ways that you can get in shape, especially now that, you know, you can go outside more and, you know, do some more things. So it's not just working out. That's one thing that I love to preach on this podcast where you don't just have to lift weights. That's not the one thing that you can use to get in shape. There's so many others, like what you were talking about when you were training those classes. I mean, there's so many different options. I mean, yoga, yeah. yoga is a great example too. Uh, Pilates or just, um, I mean, even like I said in the past, I've used like beach body workouts. So Beachbody has like some beginners or some more yoga Pilates styles too. Oh yeah, a- absolutely. And just, yeah, it's just realize that it's going to take you more than, you know, a day, like, like people in our generation want everything now and they want it yesterday where it's like, you know, yeah, this is not going to be a lifestyle that's going to, you know, be able to do that. But especially going into the future, I mean, if we were to talk to you a year from today, where would you like to be at in your bodybuilding journey? Where would you like to be at just in your overall life? What are some goals that you'd like to have achieved if we were to talk to you again a year from today? All right, so um, a year from today, definitely pro. I'd like to be able to say that I won a pro show. I'd like to be able to say that I qualified for Olympia. That'd be cool. That's like my main goal right now is just to, if I can completely go in and dominate this year, qualify for Olympia, that would be everything. Um, Obviously, get my online training business going, um, being set up in this new gym I'm headed to and, you know, getting the personal training started there, working on selling like, um, maybe not bundles of training sessions, but teachings like, Hey, let me help you for four or five sessions just to get you started, just to teach you like techniques, angles, stuff like that. So working on a couple of different personal training business ventures. Well, and that's honestly the same thing that me and my brother did because he was a division one baseball catcher. And he just during the pandemic, he we had a space that he he would work out at and that he was the 
a coach at now where they just had just a open indoor field. And we filmed the series of videos of him like teaching proper catching techniques because there had been no videos about anyone ever teaching like how to do like proper catcher workouts, like how to like exercises. So we spent almost a month, like every night from like eight to midnight, we would film 8, 8, 8, 8 p.m. I didn't, we didn't go 8 a.m. to, you know, 8 to midnight, you know, that'd be a little too much for me. But yeah, so we did that for like a month and yeah, he, he did that and he loved that. So yeah, I think a lot of people really, really do respond to that as well. But yeah, and that's, you know, we wish you nothing but the best on that. And, you know, obviously as soon as your websites gets done, let me know and I'd be more than happy to give it a shout out because, you know, it's all about, you know, helping out others right now during this, during this pandemic. But before we wrap things up, I do got to ask because being a guy and, you know, I did lose a significant amount of size on my arms this, this during this, uh, during this pandemic, because, you know, I just, I'm gonna be honest, I neglected them. I shouldn't have, but I did, but you know, I, one of the things that I just find, you know, so great about some of the photos that you have is that like, uh, like shoulders, you have really great arms too. And being a gym bro, like me, I mean, we basically communicate with each other in arms, me and other gym bros. I mean, that's the only language that we ever speak. So what do you do? What do you do for like biceps, triceps? What do you do for that? Because I have been working them for about two months now, getting back into them. And, you know, it, there's been a little bit of growth, but I mean, everyone does everything differently. And I'm one of those people where I'm too, so much of a sucker that I still do some of the exercises that I've done, you know, like forever. And I don't tend to mix things up as much as I should. I really like like preacher curl machines, just as heavy, hard as I can go. And again, it's all about how you like place your arms. Like, don't just place them like that. You gotta place them and push out, so you really get right on the peak. Um, of course, like alternating dumbbell curls, but it's all about different angles. Like, you know, go to your incline bench and do dumbbell curls this way. You can turn them out and do this way. You can do incline hammer curls. Um, straight and easy curl bar curls just like heavy you know have a spotter that way you can do a couple pass failure that's the main thing do you do the thing that a lot of people sometimes do where like as you're like curling up you like twist the elbow a little bit like like what some of those people do just try to get like more of a peak or something like that that's one thing that i've seen a lot of people do it's yeah no like your arm should never just be your arms should never leave your side you should always push your arms and elbows into your body um, I always keep my wrist like this. I don't let my wrist break and my elbows never move away. So I'm just, I'm tight. Everything is just tight down up. Yeah. That's one thing that I've seen other people do too. Yeah. Where I mean, and then they do like the, the thing where like they twist their elbows and it's like, I think that that's what you do if you only have like a five or 10 pound dumbbell or something like that on. And then you, you know, you need to create something that's a little bit harder for you. But yeah, then again, that's, that's, you know, that's for arms, everyone. So she's given us a lot of good pointers there. And I mean, follow her and look at her programs too. If you want more than that, I mean, if you think she's given good info, which I honestly think she's given great info. So, you know, I would, I would be more than happy to, you know, help support her in that. So that, that again, that is just so great. And again, Katie, we cannot thank you enough for coming back on the podcast and giving us an update and, you know, sharing your journey with us again and, you know, how, how things have been. And, you know, we wish you nothing but the best. And, you know, lastly, I don't think I asked you this the last time, but if someone were to walk up to you and say, like, there's one thing that you can change personally about the sport of bodybuilding and everyone will go along with it, what would be one thing that you'd like to see changed? Pay more money. Yeah. Lower the cost of competitions. You definitely shouldn't have to lose money when you compete, yeah. For sure, shouldn't have to. Yeah. That is, yeah, that is ridiculous, and that's something that I've said a lot on this podcast as well. But again, you guys... Everyone go and give Katie a follow. I'll leave a link to her Instagram page down below. And, you know, but again, buyer beware. You will be inspired to, you know, get out, get off that couch and stop eating all those Twinkies and, you know, get in shape. And, you know, if anyone wants to, is in the Florida area and they're looking for a trainer, you know, I'll leave all of the, her other information down there too. So you can get a hold of her and she'd be more than happy to work with her. And, you know, again, you guys, it's all about, you know, just the positivity and supporting each other on this podcast. But again, Katie, I cannot thank you enough for coming back on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, again, you guys, you'll probably be seeing her on the pro stage, you know, sometime next year when we have her back on. So I'm just saying everyone be, be ready for that. But again, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.